Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to try and fix this TI-83 Plus calculator. Uh, essentially it has a screen issue where the uh, pixels are kind of faded and not showing up. You can see when I type in numbers here, kind of that top line shows up, but nothing below it. And like the top line gets cut in half. So this is usually a problem with the ribbon cables that they need to be basically heated up so the adhesive re-adheres. Re we'll be using my soldering iron to do that. Uh, but first we gotta get this apart. So we'll go ahead and take the batteries out. Work my way around here. And then you gotta take these screws off in the back. This, this one that holds the battery cover in also holds the kind of cover together. So don't forget to take this one out. That comes out. There's actually two batteries in here. So we can get them popped out. There's one. There's two backup batteries. And then I believe it's T6 maybe. Are these other uh, six screws? What do I got here? I have a T6. Yep. So it's these. There's these six T6 screws. Let's see if we can get these out real quick. This is my second time trying to fix one of these calculators. First time, I was unsuccessful. Um, so I think it had an issue, but that one had an issue different than this one. Basically the screen just wasn't working at all. At least this one I'm getting some pixels to show up. So we will see if we are luckier or more successful this time. screws out. There's one. Or there's number three. Number four. And these screws in the bottom are a little bit deeper. So actually that screwdriver I have doesn't let me get all the way down there, but I can still get it. I just use the bit usually. See if I can get this side. See if I can work it in there and get some traction. Let me work on getting these out. I'll get back with you guys. So I was able to get those screws out. Uh, this last one I ended up having to use a 1.5 Allen key. So I guess you could probably use that for all these screws. Maybe they're not, it's kind of hard to tell if they're star-shaped or just kind of like a hexagon Allen key shape. But either way, we got the screws out. Uh, I would try and get this one out first if you're gonna do this project, because this one twice now has been the harder one to get out. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, so again, you get this kind of cracked open here and you put some kind of pry tool in there just work your way around. Don't go too deep because there's a circuit board in there you don't want to damage. And usually kind of going around the top, I think it's easier. The air kind of starts to pop open on its own. And we'll keep working our way around. And then it all comes off there. There's the back. This is the inside. Now, it's kind of funny because it does look different than previous ones I've used. Makes me think maybe, I don't know if someone's repaired it before or not. Um, but as you can see mine, this is a TI-83 Plus I tried to repair before. Um, this one's got a little bit different looking. It's got the foam pads, has like some kind of capacitor here this one doesn't have. Um, so it's dive into this a little deeper. 
We're gonna take this kind of shielding off here. It's got a couple Phillips screws holding it in. It's interesting how there's some variation there between the T. They're both TI eighty three plus calculators, but also I can see this one has a different ribbon ribbon cable. So there's going to be some variation between uh, the calculators, so don't be too surprised by that. And we can see if we can get this off. It might be harder here since it's got these foam pieces kind of holding it on. Let's see if I can peel these up a little bit. Okay, so after peeling that side up, I'll peel this one up a little bit. This should be able to come off now. It's usually glued on a little bit at the bottom. Put that to the side. That kind of exposes this ribbon cable here. Let's take a look at the, the back. So basically we're gonna heat up this ribbon cable, kind of where it enters into the screen there, right here where it connects to the board. And then we're also going to heat up this bottom kind of middle ribbon cable, both on the part where it connects there and up here to see if that helps us. So I'll get my soldering iron turned on here. I have it set to the low setting, which is 176 degrees Fahrenheit on mine. Probably have to give it a second here to warm up. It's starting to get a little bit hot. And we'll start with the top here of the screen. And there's kind of a nice, uh, nice little ledge there you can kind of use as a reference point. Kind of at the top here. Just kind of work your way down, applying some gentle pressure onto the cable. Making sure it gets plenty hot. And basically you don't want to make, definitely don't make sure you, make sure your soldering iron isn't set super hot because then it can melt the plastic, it can melt the screen. So again, use it on the lowest setting here. We're just trying to get it, this adhesive warmed up, get these uh, contacts to reconnect. So I'll work my way across slowly, kind of at different angles. Seeing if we can get these to Connect here. Run along the top of it here. You kind of smooth it out. You can kind of look at it at an angle, see if there's any air bubbles or anything. Just get it kind of smoothed out there. That should be pretty good here. I don't think I can get it any flatter. So we, we'll do, let's kind of get some of these batteries out of the way soldering iron back up. 
And then we can lay this flat. Or not, almost flat. Let's see. I'm going to, before I lay it flat down, what I'll do is jump down to this middle cable here. And we will turn our soldering iron and kind of work on these contacts down here. Working our way uh, on on this uh, board here. Again, a little bit boring to watch. Um, but basically, I'm going to kind of heat it up just like I'm doing here. Just gentle strokes, kind of Bob Ross style. It seems like I can get these uh, contacts. They kind of start to look shinier, it looks like, as they connect better to the board. So if it's kind of dull in this one spot, I spend a little more time heating it up right there. And then I'll kind of do a different angle. Just kind of run it across, applying some gentle pressure, being careful not to pull this ribbon cable out or do any damage to anything. One more time. Good, and that should hopefully be enough to where we can set this board back or the screen back in. And now I'll focus on the top section of this ribbon cable. It's getting its adhesive heated back up. Work your way down. And then I'll do a different angle here. Again, just trying to get those contacts to kind of look shiny, I think. It's a good way to describe it. Give them to really press in there. It's almost done on this section. And then this last section will be up here where it attaches to the board. Go ahead and heat this back up. Get it re reattached here. Almost like a slight crease here where it kind of connects to the board and you can kind of try and define that a little bit more. Kind of run the soldering iron again, a little bit shorter strokes. And we're almost done here. We can put our batteries back in here in a second. See if we made any difference. Um, you can't say, while you're doing it, it's not always the most satisfying because it's kind of hard to tell if you're making any difference here. Uh, definitely got this more firmly attached, I can tell, than what it was before. And 
just kind of trying to get the air bubbles out of it. But it looks like we've done a pretty good job here. All right, so I'm gonna put my soldering iron down, turn it off so that it doesn't start a fire. We will reattach this kind of metal sheeting, shielding thing here. If we can remember how it goes. Or maybe I have it backwards. Okay. So as you can see, this little part folds down. Don't let that confuse you. You just fold it back up. Line up the holes. Put this back under these foam pads here. Grab the two Phillips screws. I'll magnetize mine so that's a little bit easier. There's one. Here's the second one. All right. Put the back on. Clicks in pretty easily. Right now the screen looks pretty good. Put some batteries in. See nothing there. They had that battery in backwards, so hopefully that was the reason. still having the same issues we had before. Well, maybe let's see, did it get any better? Yeah, the screen looks exactly the same as it did before. So another failed try to fix here. Let me know if you guys have got any suggestions in the comments below. Unfortunately, it did not work for me. I'll catch you all next time.